بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome all our dear viewers to another master class This is the A to Z of Zakat master class And Alhamdulillah today with us we have uh, our respected teacher Sheikh Ibrahim Nuhu So without further ado inshallah let's uh, jump into the topic and let's learn more about Zakat Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. How is everything with you? All good? Good. Alhamdulillah. 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 So, uh, Shaykh, today we've uh, troubled you a bit by inviting you to speak on this topic of zakat. Ah, it's okay. I mean, we get a lot of questions, and different people in different parts of the world they have you know different types of questions regarding zakat. So today, what we'll try to do is uh, get a comprehensive understanding of uh, zakat. Allah aid us. And how, because a lot of the time people we talk about Hajj, we talk about Salah, but Zakat as a subject of learning or even implementing, it gets sidetracked at times or there is confusion of how to perform it. So inshallah, moving forward, we try to make sure we can, you know, make it easy for the people to understand. Mm. So starting off with the very first question, Sheikh, what is Zakat? Why is it so important for us? Okay. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala al-mabuthi rahmatil al-alameena nabiyyina wa habibina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim amma ba'd. Zakah literally is defined as growth and purity. So you have two words to be used when defining zakah. Growth and also purification or purity or cleanliness. And uh, uh, these had a linguistic uh, meaning, which uh, later Sharia borrowed the meaning, you know, to mean something else. Uh, but at the same time, it maintained the connection. And this is what uh, Sharia does. Uh, it takes from the cust custom, mm -hmm. and it also takes from the uh, from the language. Mm -hmm. uh, there are three things uh, which uh, the scholars usually uh, do when they address. When they address the uh, three things, they usually do when they address uh, a word uh, in terms of the language. They call it al haqaiq haqiqa al lugawiya haqiqa al shariya al haqiqa al orfiya. The last one is haqiqa al shariya, luga first and then orf and then uh, mm -hmm. uh, luga means uh, the origin of the word, the meaning given to the word by the Arabs when this they ask for the Arabic language. Uh, the Arabic language. Right. So since we are dealing with uh, Sharia. And Sharia is all about Arabic language. Mm -hmm. So we need to know the nature of the language first. It really helps a lot. So uh, uh, the, the Luga means the, the, the origin of the word, the meaning given to the word by the Arabs. Mm -hmm. uh, Sometimes the custom might borrow the word and use it to mean something else. But okay. still it will, mean some, it will maintain some uh, connections with the, with the root. Mm -hmm. Like in the Famous example they have uh, uh, a dabba. A dabba uh, means originally whatever works on the earth. We call it dabba. That means uh, everyone is dabba. You know, everything is dabba, uh, including human beings. If you take this definition, is you go to the manataka, they will tell you, yes, yes, hewanu natak. So, but. Later on, the custom took this word, borrowed it from the language, and specifically used it to address specific type of, type of those who are walking on earth. Mm -hmm. The Watil Arba, for instance. Right. Only those animals that have four legs. Mm -hmm. They call it Dabba. Uh, you get it? So, so this is how Urf and the Sharia are borrowing from the, from the language. But uh, the, the, they still use it also from time to time. As Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, مَا مِنْ دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا طَائِرٍ يَطِيرُ بِجَنَحَيْهِ So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala differentiate between dabba and the bird. But in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went back to the old meaning. He says, خَمْسُ مِنَ الدَّوَابِ كُلُّهُنَّ فَوَاسِقٍ There are five types of dabba. He said all of them are fasik. And he mentioned among them a crow. A crow is a bird. That means we are going back to the original meaning. So Sharia also does the same thing. Uh, it takes from the Arabic word, uh, it will, uh, uh, put it to mean something specific, 
like what it does with the salah, it's with the zakah, with the siyam, with the hajj also. These uh, words, they have their own meaning in the Arabic language. In the Arabic language, yeah. So salah means a dua, mm -hmm. to invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to call upon Allah. But now it doesn't mean that. Definitely. When you say salah, everyone will understand a specific type of uh, activities that begin with the takbirat al-haram and ends with yes. the sleep. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. So that's, uh, that's the salah. You come to zakah also the same thing. Mm -hmm. But you remember in my word I said sharia did not uh, borrow a word and at the same time it disconnected completely from the language. It doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. It always maintained the connection. In the prayer, the vast majority of the thing you do in the prayer is du'a. Is du'a. It's still there. In the zakah, the linguistic meaning say uh, purification and growth. This meaning also remains because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ سَرَقَةً تُطَحِرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّهِمْ بِهَا he asks us to take from the uh, the wealth of those rich people charity which will purify them with. Sorry. <coughs> uh, it will be acting as a means of purification for them. So, uh, so you see the language also remains there. And also you have the, the growth also is there. As the Prophet said, charity never decreases the wealth. It always grow it and, in, and increase it. Yeah. So the same goes to the fasting, the same goes to the to the Hajj. So this is the linguistic meaning. Like, uh, just, just to uh, jump in here. So when we say that uh, Sharia has borrowed the word, mm. so that means that the word existed or it was used by the Arabs even before the Sharia of the Prophet yeah. came. Yeah, yeah, it is part of the language. It's part of the language. Yeah, it's it part of the language. Yeah. And uh, towards the last, we mentioned that it means growth. Yeah. But when we're giving away the money, mm. it's actually decreasing. Yeah. So how do we mean, how do we understand growth? Yeah, that's what we see, it, uh, I mean, physically at the moment we're giving. Mm -hmm. But zakah is the best investment you're doing. Right. And investment for sure, your money is decreasing and then it'll come back again. Mm -hmm. growth. This is what zakah is doing. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised the givers, you know, to multiply their wealth up to 700 uh, times or even more than that. This is going to take place in this life. But uh, the, the issue is sometimes we try to confine our thinking into that dimension only. Right. That I give zakah, so the wealth and the increase has to come through this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Allah SWT might not do this. He might give me increase in some other things which are not connected to this zakah. Mm -hmm. But the reason why they came, it is because of that zakah I'm giving. So the growth so or the increase doesn't have to be specific to the money itself. It doesn't have to be specific to the money itself. Right. And we have to be very clear about this because somebody might tell you that I give, but I don't see my wealth is just normal in the way it is before mm -hmm. I started giving it's the zakah. It's decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. Uh, right? Decreasing and I still get the profit in the way I used to get. Right. I don't get an increase in the profit right. uh, either. So we have to understand this, that the risk is so vast and so big. And Allah SWT knows what we need. So sometimes I might be thinking of this, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that this is not the most beneficial thing uh, to me. So he will grant me something else, mm -hmm. which I will come and appreciate it later. Although I might not be able to link it to the zakah, but it has some connection mm -hmm. to the zakah. Allah SWT knows that. Yeah. So if we have this in mind, then we will never feel disappointed. Definitely. Uh, yeah, we will never feel disappointed. And add to that also, from time to time, the increase in the wealth itself also is taking place. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people who pay attention and focus in, uh, I mean, on their life, movement in, in their life, they will understand that, yes, something is going on in, the, in their wealth. Mm -hmm. You know, subhanAllah, I, I heard uh, somebody, one of those uh, brothers who are trying to uh, really participate in uh, da'wah activities and supporting Islam with their wealth. SubhanAllah, he said he lived in a place whereby almost most of the businesses have gone. But he said his business, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, preserve it. You know, in a very amazing way. It doesn't go down. It keep increasing during the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And this is not medical thing. This is not mask. This is not anything, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, I will say, yeah, this being Allah ta'ala has connection to his attitude to support the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as such, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect his, his wealth. That's why Umar used to say that I don't, I, I don't worry about uh, Abdurrahman bin Auf and uh, Uthman bin Affan. Mm -hmm. He said, because I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects their wealth, so I don't care about them, I care about others. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so, uh, 
So that's the literal meaning of the zakah. When it comes to the technical meaning of the zakah, you can make it as short as possible if you wish. The obligatory charity. The charity that is obligatory upon the believer. Mm -hmm. If you want to expand it, you can make it as long as you, you wish, as long as you accommodate uh, the conditions of zakah in the definition. Right. Uh, so zakah means uh, an amount of money that is given by a Muslim when his wealth reaches the prescribed amount to the eight recipient mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. Right. Yeah, so that's uh, the, the detailed one. You know, we're talking about an amount, a specific amount of money, which we call uh, the extract from the nisab, which a Muslim gives. So you learn that it has to be a Muslim. Mm -hmm. um, a Muslim give uh, after the, the wealth reaches the specific amount, which is the, the nisab, uh, to the specific type of people. That's why some scholars said specific amount, uh, um, a specific amount given to the specific uh, uh, people after the passage of a year. Mm -hmm. Specific amount as a nisab given to the uh, specific uh, type of people. These are the eight recipients uh, uh, um, after the passage of a year, mm -hmm. uh, which is how. So uh, we mentioned it's uh, it's called an obligatory charity, yeah. but interestingly, in many of the books and in many of the seminars or talks, people call it a tax, uh -huh. or even some go further off and call it a penalty. Mm. So are these terminologies okay when it comes to zakat? Uh, no, they're not. Uh, zakat is a pillar in Islam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned uh, that zakat is a pillar in Islam. Uh, in the hadith he says, Bunya al Islam ala khamsin, shahadati Allah ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah, wa yaqami salati wa ita is zakah. Also, in Ramadan, wa hajjibati Allah. In the hadith of Jibreel, also he mentioned zakah to be a pillar in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, zakah is zakah, is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taken from his wealth. Yeah, this is a very important question because. We need to understand the, the owner of the resources first. Who is the owner of the resources? That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Almighty. He owns everything. An absolute ownership with no restriction. And not just the, the resources, us also he owns us, you know. Everything that exists is owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so when he asked the rich person to take the zakah and give it to the poor, he is taking from his money. How can I tax myself, you know? Do you get an idea? If I am taking from my money, how am I taxing myself? So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking from his money, mm. he's taxing who? Mm. Mm. This is his money. Do you get the point I'm saying? Uh, Allah's money, uh, he's taking uh, from his money to give it, uh, uh, to, to ask somebody, you know, to appoint somebody to give it to another person. So that's why, why I said, just like if I'm going to take from my wealth, you know, my wealth as human being, a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm going to take from my wealth and then uh, give it to somebody. How do I call that tax, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm taxing who? You know? so, so if I understand this concept properly that this wealth belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking somebody to take from this wealth and pass it to another person and this is Allah taking from his money, passing it to somebody, somebody whom, uh, amongst uh, his creation, whomever he, he wishes. Mm -hmm. So from here you see the differences between the tax and, and, the, and the zakah. And tax is uh, the relationship between the authority and, and uh, what do you call, between the authority and, uh, the, and, people. and the people, you know, the subordinate in the community. <clears throat> Whereas zakah is the relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. Taxes, when we take them, we put them everywhere. Everyone can benefit from them. When uh, the government build the infrastructure in the country, who is benefiting from it? The public. Everyone. The public, everyone. The rich and the poor and everyone. Zakah is not like that. Mm -hmm. It is a specific amount that has to be given to those ones. You cannot uh, go beyond those mentioned by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So there is no relation, you know, in this context between tax and, and the zakah. So that concept, I really want us to, uh, to, <coughs> to understand it. Uh, when I was uh, talking about the wealth to be owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is his wealth you know and he's taking from his wealth and giving it to whomsoever he wishes 
uh, uh, and if this is the case, then we cannot call it a tax because taxes are not like that. Right. Authority are taken from the wealth of others to put it in a better place where they think is better for the for the community. Yeah, I think the the whole issue or the distinction that's very important comes uh, with Allah being the Malik or the owner of the yeah. wealth because I, I'm guessing the people who call it a tax in their understanding it's. A authority which is imposing a 2.5% tax on your wealth. That's why they're calling it a tax because they have to give it on a yearly basis. Uh, no, no, this, uh, that's, that's wrong because as you said, he's the owner. Mm -hmm. Authority imposing tax on your wealth. Mm -hmm. But this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taking from his money Definitely. and giving it to somebody. Uh, we, in our life, we don't call it tax. We call it gift. Mm -hmm. We call it charity, mm -hmm. we call it something else, but we don't call it tax. Because tax has its own definition and usually it is referring to the, uh, the, the relationship between the authority and, and the subordinate. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sorry, if, if, we can, if we cannot call it tax, then I'm pretty sure other terms like a yearly penalty or something of that sort, it, it shouldn't fit. Uh, it's not it's completely penalty. wrong. Then. It is not penalty at all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in imposing the fine on, on, on people mm -hmm. by paying the zakah. Uh, it is imposed upon everyone. The most righteous person has to pay the zakah. Mm -hmm. And penalty usually comes when there is, there is a mistake. Wrong. Yeah, there is a mistake. So some, somebody is going in the wrong direction, he did something wrong, mm -hmm. then he imposed on him this uh, penalty. But Allah wants to take it from the most righteous and the closest person. And he make, made it mandatory upon him to take that money mm -hmm. and pass it to that person. So it's, an, it's like an agency, uh, what do you call, assignment Allah SWT is, is giving uh, the rich person to take from his wealth and pass it. When I say his wealth, means Allah's wealth. Mm -hmm. The person Not, is like a caretaker or a khilafah. He's that's just a caretaker. As Allah SWT already mentioned that, جَعَلَكُمْ مُسْتَخْلَفِينَ فِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you the, the caretakers of the wealth. Khulafa mm -hmm. means somebody who is entrusted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take care of, of the wealth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Alhamdulillah. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's quite interesting. That is, that is, uh, before you move, that is, uh, when I was uh, talking about the ownership, that is, uh, I did not make a pause when I said Allah SWT is the owner of the wealth. And then I said, how can I tax uh, myself? Somebody might come and say that and you have to make a pause and then initiate the new. Yeah, I meant that in this life, we don't tax ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, even according to the definition, it doesn't work. Because Allah take, is taken from his wealth and passing it to whomsoever he, he wishes. Okay. I mean, it's quite interesting how just the title that we give it changes the whole perception. I mean, one, we are calling it obligatory charity. It's a different mindset. One, we are calling it a tax. It brings a whole different mindset. On one side, you're calling it a penalty. It changes your perception towards your religious obligation or even your relationship with Allah what it is. So it's quite interesting. Yeah, and also there is something, you know, it carries some uh, negative connotations Definitely. when you say tax. Definitely. Because usually in every place, nobody is appreciating taxes. Tax. Nobody wants <laughs> to pay the taxes. And he, uh, people pay the taxes because it, it was imposed upon them. Mm. Uh, whether the taxes are correct or they're not correct, people don't like them. Mm. So if you are to tell them that these are also taxes, uh, so he will be feeling that, yes, he just have to do it, that's what he's doing. Definitely. And the car is not supposed to be taken in this way. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be given out of love and appreciation and happiness. And, uh, and also a person should be thinking that, yes, this is the right of Allah SWT, not his right. That's why they said, you are not doing a favor to the, to the poor mm -hmm. when you give him zakat. You're not doing any favor. Even some scholars say, when you go to him, you should put your hand underneath. Mm -hmm. He takes his should be on top mm -hmm. because Allah respected him by sending you to go and give the money to him. Mm -hmm. Although nowadays we don't do that, they have to come and look for us. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Allah mm -hmm. So it's basically the rich, uh, the poor person is coming and taking their own money. It was uh, like an amana exactly, with the rich person. Exactly, their own money which Allah SWT gave them. Mm -hmm. So for the people who are liable to give zakat, it's just like an amana that they're holding on to. Uh, that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the reason why, since it is an amana, Allah SWT gave them, they will get into trouble if they don't pass it on the Day of Judgment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a question that could arise at this point is, people could say, I give hundreds and thousands of ringgits in charity throughout the year. 
why do I need to come and give this 2.5%? I should be exempted because I have given more than 2.5 as charity. How do we tackle that? And uh, this is very simple. Mm -hmm. If you have a child and you ask the child to do specific task mm -hmm. and the boy is not doing, but he does so many things which you like, mm -hmm. would you still ask him about that one which is very crucial, something which is very crucial for the family to live? You tell him do this mm -hmm. and he is not doing it. Mm -hmm. But he does so many other things, cleaning the house and, you know, and you like all of those things. Would you ask him? Definitely. Definitely. If you don't, if you're in some countries, he will get smacked, you know, mm -hmm. all of the good deeds he has been doing will be useless. Mm -hmm. So if you can understand it within this also uh, mentality of ours, it will be justified. It will be logical mm -hmm. that this is what Allah SWT asks us to do. And this is the most important thing for us to tackle these social issues that Allah SWT wants us to, to tackle in our communities. Uh, uh, Zahid, when you give the, uh, what do you call, the, the sadaqa, you know, how much we give in the sadaqa? One ringgit. Sometimes the most richest person will take some few ringgit and give, and that's it. Another person also give. <coughs> we give it when it comes to, uh, what do you call, to our attention. I pass and then somebody's looking for it, I give. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why some scholars said uh, uh, people needed to be reminded in Ramadan. I mean, I mean, uh, needed to be reminded for charity, but in Ramadan, they don't have that much need to be reminded because they are feeling that which the poor person is, is feeling. So charity, you need to be reminded about it. And sometimes only when you see, then you remember, oh, this is a good uh, platform for you to give. Mm -hmm. Usually yeah. people don't go and look for places where they can give charity, except maybe sometimes when they're in trouble. They really want something from Allah, then they will look for charity. And uh, no, no, no. So if Allah SWT make just a charity, you can imagine how much are we going to generate in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, people will suffer a lot. Definitely. But if Allah SWT, uh, but the system made it mandatory. It is wajib upon you. you the way you remember the prayer, you have to keep remem remembering this. That this world has a portion in it which is supposed to be taken away. Uh, I mean, taken away from it and given to that uh, person whom Allah SWT wants. Mm -hmm. So charity, the normal charity doesn't uh, replace zakah. So zakah is an obli uh, obligation, the person has to do it. So it's like you don't do the wajibat, the prayer, you don't pray the hurasar, but all the rawatib you're doing. Mm. Yeah, so, so those uh, sunnah prayers will be useless. Yeah. You'll be useless. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense, that makes sense. Okay, so uh, moving forward, so uh, even when we were speaking about the definition of zakat, we mentioned of how it was a word that was used in the Arabic language before the Sharia of the Prophet ﷺ. But is the whole concept of zakat uh, that is specific to us or was it there in the Sharia of the Prophets before us also? So like what's the history of zakat? I would like to know that. Uh, uh, Wallahu alam, you know, there are differences of opinion concerning uh, the issue of the zakah, but charity in general it was there. Mm -hmm. Was there. In almost all the sharia, they have the charity, the concept was there. But in the way it is uh, in our religion, the, this sophisticated way, this one I have never come across a uh, text from the Prophet ﷺ that said it. And the Quran for sure, we don't have this. But in the Sunnah of the Prophet I have never come across a place where it is mentioned or uh, any scholar, to my little knowledge, I have never come across a place where some scholars mentioned that zakah used to be prescribed to the previous, upon the previous nation in the way it is in our Sharia. By the way, but did charity, you mean the 2.5% or in general? Uh, the, zakah. general the system itself, okay. this comprehensive system to be in existence, yeah, because even in our Sharia it doesn't come like that. Mm -hmm. And many scholars said the prescription of the zakah came in Medina. Mm -hmm. or some said it was in Makkah. Mm -hmm. Most likely, this is the most uh, authentic opinion. It was in Makkah. <coughs> uh, the system was given to the Prophet ﷺ in Makkah, but the details, you know, were given in Medina. You know, when Iman was firmly, uh, firmly established in the heart of the believers, and they relaxed more than Allah SWT gave them the, the detail. But in Makkah it was that, because in uh, Surah to uh, Fustilat, which is Makkah, Allah SWT says, وَوَيْلُ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ mm -hmm. And that was revealed before the Hijrah. الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ They don't give zakah. So that's why they said it was there, but it is not in the detail we see uh, it nowadays. Yeah. I mean, that, that would bring me to my next question about the confusing matter, or rather, I mean, confusing for the unlearned people 
of the difference between how Allah uses the term sadaka and zakat in the Quran because uh, what could be said here is that what was obligatory or recommended in the Makki period was giving charity and after hijrah what was obligated was the actual zakat so how do we get over the understanding of when is it referring to zakat when it when is it referring to sadaka like what's the difference ah uh, the context mm-hmm. uh, when zakat is mentioned then it it is a specific uh discipline uh when sadaka is mentioned this is the main co- uh, title which includes zakat mm-hmm. and all forms of charities also they're under this uh, category so you have the mother is sadaka and under it you have different types of sadaqa mm-hmm. you have sadaqa al-fitr you have sadaqa al-mal you have zakat you have zakat al-fitr zakat al-mal and you have uh, other types of nafaqat which uh, sharia call sadaqa mm-hmm. so if you want to know whether this is uh, specifically meant for the zakat in the context or you get some interpretations by the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then you will know that this is meant for the for the for the zakat mm-hmm. Uh, uh, like the word, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says uh, to Mu'adh ibn Jabal he says فَإِنْهُمْ أَطَعُوكَ لِذَلِكَ فَعَلِمْهُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ افْتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُؤْخَذُ مِنْ أَغْنِيَائِهِمْ فَتُرَدَّ عَلَى فُقَرَائِهِمْ and he sent him to Yemen he said if they agree with La ilaha illallah and they agree with the prayer then you should tell them that there is also something else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed upon them in their wealth sadaqa uh, go to sadaqa but he's referring to Mm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, if we speak, uh, how do we know that it's, he's referring to zakat? Because he says, mm-hmm. and sadaqah is, uh, could be taken from anyone. Even if you're poor, you can give uh, mm-hmm. sadaqah. Mm-hmm. But zakat, only a rich person can participate in it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but the zakat is only a rich person can participate in it. So, but then that would also raise a question like uh, it's a pillar, which of course Allah rewards the, the person who's doing it. Mm-hmm. So a question could arise that this is a, an act of worship which only the rich can do mm. and the poor cannot you know partake in it so they're missing out on a lot of reward mm. so how do we understand that uh, no they shouldn't worry at all they shouldn't worry at all because alhamdulillah in this uh, religion of ours as imam malik said uh, not everyone allows what a granted the opportunity to participate in all the righteous deeds mm-hmm. how many righteous deeds do we have millions of them you know and a lot a lot countless number of righteous deeds given to us in this sharia of muhammad sallallahu and in fact the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i mean the scholars they define righteous deed al ibadah doing anything that allah is pleased with mm-hmm. and happy with you know so many things removing things from the road also is righteous deed you know uh, pleasing people making people happy smiling you know so many things you know in this life that you can do to please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no way for you to find a rich person who does everything. Mm-hmm. They also have deficiency in some other things. So this is how we complete ourselves. They, they do something which uh, the poor cannot do. But also the poor people also, they have other things which they can do in which the rich people might not be able to, to do it. You might find some few, uh, few amongst uh, the rich people who are, mashallah, wherever you go, you find them in that place. Mm-hmm. So the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told Rasulullah Zahaba ahlu duthuri bil ujur They said, Ya Rasulullah, the rich people, they, they, they have taken all the rewards, you know They pray in the way we pray, they fast in the way we fast And they have uh, some balance of their wealth and they give it in charity, but we don't have that The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you also, Allah SWT has given you what you can do, you know you know, referring to what I have just mentioned now, that we have so many other things, you know. The, the dhikr you are doing. It says, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. I said, this one, Allah SWT granted you this. So the poor people, they, they, they got this information from Rasulullah, and they started practicing. You know, they did not want to tell the, the rich people. Uh, one of the rich people heard about that, that there was a meeting between the Prophet ﷺ and the poor people. SubhanAllah, people are competing in righteousness. He went and he talked to that poor person, you know, in some uh, places, gave him some gift, you know. <laughs> so since it's, this is a sharia of Allah, there is no bribe in it, it's just gift, you know. Gave him all the information, you know. So he shared with the rich people, they started doing also. 
And then the poor people came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and told him, Ya Rasulullah, they started doing what we are doing. Mm. And Subhanallah, he said, Dalika Fadullah, you take him Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala make differences amongst the people. We cannot be equal and we will remain like this. Yeah, so there are things which we do, they don't do. You know, a person might be so rich, you know, wealth distracts a lot. Mm-hmm. It distracts a lot. You really need strong Iman to help you to maintain your rituals when a person is rich. So the poor people also, they have a means, you know, to do other things which are not related to wealth, but they can reach the position of the rich people and even supersede them in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. I mean, end of the day, of course, Allah knows our near, He knows uh, our so situation. That's, uh, that's, that's it. Just like when the sisters ask Allah, uh, the Prophet sallallahu yes. alayhi wa how come uh, jihad is uh, only prescribed on the brothers and we don't get involved? Allah says, La titamannu ma fadlallahu bi ba'dakum ala ba'd. Don't wish that. Mm-hmm. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favors some of you and give, the, don't wish that you also get involved. Say, keep it aside. You also have some other things. Focus on what can I do to reach them? What can I do to get higher reward? That's the best uh, thing to be focusing on. Mm-hmm. It's like the a one real or one ringgit given by the poor person could have more value in the yeah, than the 100 ringgits, 100, ringgit, 100 yeah, reals from a depending person. Also, this one has also depending on the way and the situation because uh, and that, that person given millions of ringgit mm-hmm. and this person given wondering it you know the difficulty faced by both of them is is not the same definitely the that rich person this is very simple for him but the poor person he has to think a lot mm-hmm. if i give this ring it you know so this effort that he's making uh, making within himself you know to convince himself that giving is better is also counted which the rich person doesn't have it mm-hmm. Definitely. You know, that's the reason why I said, you know, we have countless, you know, number of ways that we can please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we don't know how much the reward will be. Mm-hmm. You know, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa their iman is beyond our comprehension, you know. You can't understand what kind of iman they had. In the way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, if you spend like the size of the amount of uhud, of gold, it would not be equal to one hand of rice given by one of them. They're one of the Sahaba. You can see the differences, you know. This is gold, this is rice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> gold like Uhud. You know, gold even like the same amount of the rice, you know, it is a lot, uh, a lot you know. Lot. But this one is gold and like the amount of Uhud. But he just spent one hand of uh, corn, you know, but it is way better than what, what we are doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Iman also works here, as you said. Mm-hmm. So uh, moving forward uh, regarding Zakat and how it appears to us in the Quran. Could you let us know more of how Allah has described Zakat itself in the Quran? Yeah, many times, you know, uh, many times. Some people will tell you uh, 33 or 80 something, you know. Uh, All of these uh, doesn't have that much of significance except the fact that mentioning things many, many times Mm -hmm. shows importance. Yeah, Allah SWT mentioned Zakat so many times. And he attached it to one of the most important acts of worship that a person uh, could do to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the prayer. 27 times. Uh, that's why the, the, the Quran, uh, I'm sorry, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, Wallahi la man bayna salat wa zakah. He said, I will definitely fight anyone who is separated between salah and zakah. Mm-hmm. Because Allah in many, many places, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَةِ وَأَعْتُ الزَّكَاءِ وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَةِ وَأَيْكِيمُ الصَّلَةِ وَالْمُؤْتُ وَالْمُقِيمِينَ الصَّلَةِ وَالْمُؤْتُ نَزَّكَاءِ You know, so that shows important, you know, to be mentioned a lot and also to be mentioned with something that is uh, extraordinary and extremely important, that shows important. So, like speaking of the importance of zakat itself, like as we uh, mentioned at the beginning, People don't give it that level of importance as that we give to our daily five prayers or going to Hajj mm-hmm. or even fasting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to call it a neglected pillar, but it's something people kind of neglect. So, what can we tell such people to remind them of the importance of zakat firstly? And what would happen if a person is neglectful of giving zakat yeah this is what i said uh, people don't neglect zakat mm-hmm. but since it is something that is taken from their dunya mm-hmm. so want it and not want it that mm-hmm. much that's why they don't speak about it you know now, now now everyone is asking when ramadan is coming you know 
you don't see them asking when am I <laughs> going to pay the zakah. Definitely. You know, so uh, so this is one. Uh, they remember zakah in Ramadan. Many people want to pay their zakah in Ramadan, which I guess, uh, inshallah, if time permits, we will we shall be talking about zakah, whether it is an importance to pay zakah in Ramadan or when exactly is a person is supposed to pay their zakah. Uh, so so as I was saying, they remember it, but occasionally. Uh, they remember it occasionally. For those people who are not thinking about zakah and they are negligent uh, concerning the payment of zakah, uh, and he, Allah, I have nothing to tell them except that uh, the fact that you know this is a very crucial matter. In a way, there are some scholars, although they're very minority, who believes that if a person doesn't pay the zakah, if the person doesn't pay the zakah, he went out of Islam. If he refused to pay, he refused to pay the zakah, he went out of Islam. We have very minority amongst the scholars who believe in the, in this uh, in this opinion so that shows how crucial is the matter and staying away from zakah no doubt it is one of the major sins and major sins these are the sins that destroy a person and the sins that Allah threaten the person who is not given and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned subhanallah a lot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about this matter in surah tawbah he says uh, I hope I quoted the ayah properly. So, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks in this ayah about those people who ha have gold, but unfortunately they don't give a zakah from that gold. Allah says they will be punished. You know, on the day of judgment because of this. Mm -hmm. And the Prophet ﷺ described the nature of this punishment when he says in uh, As-Sahih, uh, 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 He said there will be nobody who has gold or silver. And at the same time, he doesn't give the zakah, except that on the day of judgment, Allah SWT will turn it into a metal and put it in hellfire. You know, and when it becomes completely fire itself, then his body will be lashed with it. Mm -hmm. uh, SubhanAllah. What makes it scarier is the uh, the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he will be punished في عرصات يوم القيامة في يوم كان مقداره خمسين ألف سنة in a day which has the length of 50,000 years. Imagine, uh, Zahid, 50,000 years a person is punished by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and this is just the introduction. It's not a real punishment. He said, "Fi yom in kana maqdaru khamsin alf sana." In a day which has the length of fifty thousand years. And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Thumma yura sabiluhu imma ila jannah wa imma ila nar." And then he will be shown his way either to jannah or to or to hell. Either to jannah if Allah subhanahu wa taala make the either to jannah if Allah subhanahu wa taala agree to uh, forgive him. You know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him, then he can take him to paradise. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, did not forgive him, then he has to go back to hell for uh, the rest of uh, what he called the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted him to stay, to stay inside hell. So this hadith itself, I think is more than enough, you know, to remind those people that this is a serious matter with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take the money from him mm -hmm. because this is his wealth. He granted you and he deprived others, but he gave you to take the money from him. But at the same time, unfortunately, a person is not given the right of Allah. Uh, in this uh, life, Allah will take the barakah from his wealth and no protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his wealth. And also in the hereafter, he will be uh, put, exposing himself to this uh, kind of difficulty mentioned by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa so there's loss in the dunya as well as loss in the uh, Loss of the dunya. He's going to lose the dunya and he's going to lose the akhirah. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that it's it's uh, quite clear now on how we can uh, you know explain the importance of zakat to the people but uh, this would raise another question so would it be right to say that when we give out our zakat we actually show it to the people so that they are also encouraged to give zakat in uh, comparison to our normal charity because the hadith of the prophet sallam would said you give with one hand so the other hand doesn't know so would that apply to zakat as well? Like, should we hide it or should we make it public so that more people are encouraged to give zakat? Yeah, this is this is what some scholars uh, mentioned. They said it's good to give zakat, especially when you're living in a place where people are, 
uh, very negligent concerning the zakah. Mm -hmm. He said it is good for you to uh, publicize it, to do it in public so that other people will see it and imitate you in that, in that regard. Mm -hmm. And also it is good also in another way because uh, uh, people might be talking about uh, this person being rich but they never saw him paying the zakah. Mm -hmm. Uh, they never saw him paying the zakah because zakah, everyone knows that it is wajib and when they see you uh, being a rich person, they shall see you also giving the zakah. And who, is, who are the beneficiaries? The poor people who are next to you. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's good to make it in public. You know, uh, no need to gather people and come and say, this is my zakah, but uh, give it to the person and tell him, this is my, this is my zakah. Mm -hmm. To mention that this is my zakah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Sheikh, uh, moving forward, uh, we discussed about zakat and the importance of it. But do we know of what exactly was the wisdom of zakat being legislated? Of course, other than helping the people. Like, what impact does it have on society if we do give it? And what if we don't give it? Hmm. Okay, uh, the, the, the impact, if we don't give it, we're already living in it now. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, let's move to the impact if we give it. Mm -hmm. Why do we need to pay the zakat? It has so many purposes. Uh, the, the most important one is a submission and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To test our submission and obedience to Allah. So this is the greatest wisdom actually, ibadah. Okay? And the second one is to increase our iman. For sure when a person uh, involved in giving the zakat, it increases his iman. We do believe, according to the Aqidah of Al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Iman increases and decreases. And what increases the Iman is the righteous deed. What decreases the Iman is the, is the evil deed. So giving the Zakah increases the Iman, no doubt about that. And also, it increases the brotherhood. For sure, uh, Zahid, the person who will make a gift to you, that love between you and him is going to increase. You know, the connection between the rich and the poor will be uh, maintained. Mm -hmm. Protection, the brotherhood, uh, the togetherness, the unity will come back to the Ummah bi'idhnillahi tabarak wa ta'ala. And also one of the, the, the objectives of the zakah is purification. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that khud min amwalihim sadaqatan tutahiruhum wa tuzakihim biya. It purifies the giver, the giver and it purifies also the wealth itself. And it makes, it makes it clean. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, yes, it, it is doing this. That's the reason why uh, uh, the, the Prophet Sallallahu said, the family member of Rasulullah Sallallahu are not supposed to receive the zakah because awsakhun nas, he called it. It's like the, 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 the I don't know, wasikh is a dirt, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the dirty part of the wealth mm -hmm. being taken out of it. It doesn't mean that if somebody take it, then oh, people should stay away from it. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just make it uh, impermissible for the family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It doesn't actually, befit his status. Uh, it, exactly, uh, it, it, the status of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yes. and, uh, and the family members. Mm -hmm. So it purifies and also one of the objectives of the zakah is to have a person to protect and to grow his wealth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as the Prophet said, There might be, and there are for sure, other wisdom which we might not come across. But Allah uh, prescribed this system for us so that we can be able to tackle you know, the social illness that the community is suffering from. Starting from poverty and lack of righteousness. All of this, if zakah is uh, being uh, uh, preserved and managed properly, I can assure you, that most of these social illnesses that the community is suffering from, they will be, they will be gone completely. Mm -hmm. Because many of them are doing this because of either poverty, you know, lack of uh, means, you know, to survive. If zakah is activated, you know, and managed properly, we will never see all of these, uh, these, uh, these uh, issues. Yeah. And inshallah, I, and if time permits, we talk about the zakat re recipient, we will talk about this matter, inshallah. I mean, uh, when we are speaking again, from a theoretical perspective, it sounds very good that zakat as an institution can come and change the society. But then a few, I don't want to call them critics, but people might say, oh, you guys are living in a very old world and this is not how it functions. Or it's just black and white, it's not practical. But in reality, we do have the, a practical implemented solution from the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz where we saw how the zakat institutions or the work institutions were put in place and 
they couldn't find people to give zakat to and i think uh, you have a few papers uh, highlighting this as well could you uh, tell us a bit more about yeah this uh, the first question that i asked uh, and yeah, i would like to ask those uh, people is to tell me where zakat is managed properly mm-hmm. you know and the matter of zakat is addressed properly by the authority and by the community if we have such a society and also at the same time we couldn't see the impact then they can talk mm-hmm. but we don't have zakat is messed up by either the authority nobody cares about it we are busy collecting taxes but we don't care about that which is obligatory by the creator and the people in the community t- is are taking it as mustahab not something that is obligatory upon them i call it mustahab because a person pays when he wants to pay nobody is going to look after him to see you know uh whether he pays or he doesn't pay you know? so that's the first question i will ask then for you to make a conclusion then you have to find a place where the system is fully established first and the result is not uh generated then you can talk then we can say yeah, yeah the system is not effective but this will never happen never happened and it will never happen <clears throat> if in the past they can do it in our time we can do it and as i said all of these uh, problems that we are facing you know uh, bad ones in our community and uh, sisters sometimes they had to go and sell their honor and dignity to find something to eat from day one you know from the past we, we had uh, these uh, issues you remember the hadith of those uh, three people in the cave mm-hmm. uh, one of them said he has uh, a cousin that he loves so much and i mean she was so righteous you know he asked her for herself she refused but now but uh hanaibatun you know calamity uh, befell her and she was in uh, desperate need of wealth that was the reason why she went to him you know? mm-hmm. and subhanallah i was uh, saying if we have a system for the zakah in those days where she can just go and take her right you know we have our qaf where she can just go and take her right she would never come to him but she had no option except to go to uh, that uh, that person you know and subhanallah only allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected her otherwise she will lose her honor why because of uh, looking for something to eat you know mm-hmm. somebody was telling me about a sister who used to sell her honor and dignity they managed to present themselves as one of the customers who uh, is here to commit zina with her mm-hmm. she does this to get money so that she can feed her children and nobody knows this when they managed to get her and they ask her they said actually we are not uh here for this but we just want to know why did you do this and they said she she told them that she has uh lost the husband and she has a lot of children and there is nobody who is supporting in this in this place you know mm-hmm. so she had to do this for her to get something you know this is wrong decision she is making but i'm just uh, trying to tell us that uh, uh, how much it will be of importance if we have these institutions being functioning properly where they are trying to identify these type of people who are there in our society you know who are there in the society they don't know what to do and where to go to get something to feed to feed uh, themselves and i have a couple of example also that i can use in this uh, in this regard and all of these gangsters and bad ones who are going around imagine if we uh, bring them we give them good education you know fund uh, give them some money to go and uh, uh, invest in it subhanallah they will they stay away from all of this any trouble that they are put in the society where everyone is suffering from it mm-hmm. get an idea and we have other other matters so what i'm trying to say is if in the time of umar ibn abdul aziz where the wealth is limited but we do have uh, subhanallah we do have an excellent excellent and extraordinary government who cares so much about and in the lives of the people and the first thing they think about is the sharia of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he managed you know to bring people back to that, that uh, prestigious uh, uh, status within uh, uh what do you call within 2 years, two years yeah within 2 years you know mm-hmm. it's kind of miracle but he made it where as you said there were uh, instances where <clears throat> some people were looking for somebody to take their charity and they couldn't find mm-hmm. he made people satisfied mm-hmm. because of a collective system that he has and people feel a lot more that they give the charity so they have abundance of wealth in which some scholars said this is one of the sign of the day of judgment that took place in his time mm-hmm. when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said wa fi dhal mal and wealth is going to be in abundance 
they have a lot in the way the government do not know now what to do with the with the wealth so, good idea so how do they manage to do it is very simple concept mm -hmm. that's why i said if we don't make life complicated we open the door we grant people incentive they're going to engage in the in the in the in the business and they will get more you know he opened the door to the non-muslim to see islam properly <clears throat> I'm sorry, the door has been closed before he opens it. And that's one. And all of those wastelands where nobody's using them except the authority. He took them from those criminals and he passed them to the people. Since it belongs to the government, he rented them out to the people. You rent it and you pay the government the haraj, the, uh, the, the, the rent. And also at the same time, you are growing the wealth. You're going to pay the zakah for the ag agricultural yield. Mm -hmm. So they're getting twice the amount of money. People are benefiting and the government is benefiting twice. The, the, the rent and also the zakah. That's why the money is, is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And he opens the door, cut off the taxes, so everyone gets back to the business. He told them, I remember his word, uh, the land and the sea, they are both provided by Allah SWT for the benefit of humankind and nobody should be deprived, deprived when he wants to generate benefit from them. So everyone goes back to business. Imagine, imagine now everyone is technically rich. Uh, this is what contributed also to uh, the difficulty for the people who are giving zakah not to find somebody to give. Definitely. Because everyone is, is doing something for himself. Mm -hmm. you know, and that was the manhaj of the Prophet mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's why there is a point here also. I will, it's a message I sent to our leaders, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, aid them and, and put barakah in their life and protect them and guide them to do that which is right. You know, uh, focusing on that which is the, uh, the most important need of the ummah yeah, is needed and uh, having so many sections might not benefit you know can scatter the thinking of uh, the government and as such they will not be able to exhale in this or that the most important thing that people need according to the siyasa sharia is security um, <clears throat> they provide the security you know security is really necessary to provide a conducive environment for the people to move for themselves. If this happens, then government did not need to suffer chasing this person, this person to give the tax and all of these things because they are serving the community and now everyone has something to do. You know, uh, so security and justice, these two things are the main focus of the previous uh, nation. May Allah grant us good. Mm. So, uh, in, in the tech industry, generally we call it a proof of concept. So, I think the, the whole case of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz over here, it's a practically implemented proof of concept that the, the institution of zakat works. It's not something black and white just meant for the books and it might happen. It's proven, it does work. We just need to fix our system. So, just building on this and moving yeah, forward. That's, uh, Zahi. Uh, imagine a person has 25 billion dollars mm -hmm. that's what comes out if uh, the government managed to record 25 billion dollars I'm talking about Africa mm -hmm. in one of the countries a person has 25 billion dollars and this is what he says no he has more than that the record says uh, uh, I think around 15 or something uh, like that he claims that he has more than that you know and yes we all believe that most likely yes he has more than that if it is with Allah, he is going to pay the zakah for that. Imagine how much if you take 2.5% of $25 billion. Honestly speaking, Zahid, how many people will go out of uh, poverty from in, the, in his locality? And he's only one. There are some with 10, there are some with uh, what do you call this amount of billions. Forget about those. How many people with millions? A lot. Forget about them. How many people with thousands? A lot. Imagine every single person is given zakah. Every single person is given zakah. I can tell you, Zahid, most likely you will look for a needy person in a locality and you will not find. Because this zakah is given, uh, what do you call, every time. You give now, I give in few months, my howl comes. Uh, Suhail gives in few months, his howl comes uh, like this. Until, until then, with no end. And that's why zakah is supposed to be addressing the current need of the people. But unfortunately, how many people are given the zakah? You know, somebody told me in his place in his country that uh, he managed to generate what is around uh, and two million ringgit just by going around the, the, the rich people he knows. 
actually it was a woman she said just by going around the rich people she knows she managed to collect what is not less than uh, two million ringgit mm -hmm. and she said most of these rich people they are not giving the zakah because they they told her we already paid the taxes and she used to tell them this taxes is between you and the government and the zakah is between you and Allah you want Jannah or you want hell they say of course I'm looking for Jannah so give the right of Allah you know just those who she knows and this one if they even give her the whole amount they should be given you know mm -hmm. Definitely. imagine two million ringgit uh, Zahid is not an, uh, I mean a simple amount you know how many people will uh, have their life been eased because of this amount of money mm -hmm. you know and this is just her efforts just to go around how many people she knows among the rich people in her country a few of them so that's the reason why I'm saying if everyone is going to give this a cup I can tell you that it will be very difficult for you to find somebody who is in need in that place mm -hmm. Uh, we spoke about a few technical terminologies like Haul and Nisab and stuff like that. So, who are the people who are obligated to give zakat in the first place? Okay, uh, zakat is a pillar in uh, in Islam, and it has uh, conditions like any other pillar in in the religion of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The first condition is Islam, and actually mainly. Uh, the conditions mentioned by the scholars, uh, the scholars uh, are five. Yeah. By the scholars, uh, uh, five. Five conditions mentioned by them. The first one is Islam. The second one is Nisab. The third one is uh, Al Milkiya, uh, ownership. And the fourth one is uh, Al Haul. And the fifth one is As Sawm. Mm -hmm. And the first one is Islam. Uh, the, the, the person who is obliged to give the zakah is a Muslim. Uh, obliged by the authority, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost, and also authority have to follow up to make sure that he pays the zakah, has to be Muslim first. Non-Muslims, are they obliged to pay the zakah? Yes, between them and Allah, yes. But we are not supposed to impose it on them. But between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will be held, holding them accountable of it on the Day of Judgment when they meet him. They have to do but how does that work? We just said a condition is being a Muslim. So if yeah, they're not a Muslim, then how? Condition being a Muslim how? for us to charge him for this. Okay. Uh, I cannot go to a non-Muslim and tell him you must pay the zakah. Mm -hmm. But if I'm the authority, I go to this person. I tell him you have to pay the zakah if he is Muslim. Mm -hmm. But I don't go to the non-Muslim and tell I, and tell him you have to pay. But between him and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, zakah is obligatory for him. He has to pay. But the question is, if he pays. Mm -hmm. Would that work? It would not. Mm -hmm. Because everything has its own condition. You know, for it to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has to have Islam with him. Just like the prayer. It's wajib upon me to pray. And I have to provide the prerequisite, the conditions of the prayer, for my prayer to be valid in the eyes of Allah. And number one condition is what? Islam. If there is no Islam, that prayer will be useless. So the reason why we don't write in the books that Islam is a condition for the prayer, we have niya, we have tahara, because we are dealing with Muslims. That condition is already there. But as for the non-Muslim, the first condition he has to provide is the is a religion, is Islam, for it to be valid. So he, it is something that is obligatory upon him, just like the way it is something that is obligatory upon every. A uh, human being amongst the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala But there are certain conditions to be fulfilled for it to be valid Number one is Islam To get an idea, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَقَدِمْنَا إِلَى مَا عَمِلُوا مِنْ عَمَلٍ فَجَعْنَاهُ هَبَعْ مَنْثُورًا If he does it but without Islam, it will be useless He's just wasting his time uh, uh, So Islam is needed And why do we say he will be charged for not doing it? On the day of judgment, because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the in the Quran in Surah to Al Mudathir, "Ma salakum fi saqab, qalu lam lakum min al musalli." Allah will ask the people, uh, uh, "Hell, why are you here in hell?" They said, "No, we are here because uh, we did not participate. Uh, we are, we are not among those people who pray to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Wa lam lakum nitaim al miskin, and we did not feed the poor." All of these are activities that are supposed to be done by 
the Muslims. The Muslims. But here Allah SWT says they will be charged for it. They will be questioned. Why did you, uh, why, 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 why are you here? They will say because we did not pray to Allah SWT. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why I said uh, between them and Allah SWT, they will be questioned about not doing it. But between them and us, we are not supposed to impose it upon them. You get the idea? Unless if they have the first condition, which is Islam, then the government has to impose it upon them like anybody else. Yeah. So that's the first condition, Islam, okay, for it to be valid. Uh, and the second condition is Al-Nisab. Nisab is the prescribed amount that Allah SWT has specified. Only when your wealth reach this amount, then you are obliged to give the zakah. It's like a threshold. Uh, the threshold. We don't take zakah from anyone. You have one ringgit, you have to pay the zakah. You have two ringgit, you have to pay the zakah. No, we don't do that. We take the zakah from those people whose wealth reach this amount, a prescribed amount, a specific amount. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you don't have that, then no zakah uh, obligated upon you. You can give charity if you want, but we don't call it zakah. So that nisab. And uh, the, the third condition is uh, al milkiya al milkiya means the ownership. You have to be the owner of that nisab. That nisab must be owned by you. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the condition number, number four. So that means if you don't own it, there is no zakah. Because you don't pay the car on behalf of somebody, mm -hmm. you know, uh, this, is, this is somebody else's money. He should be oblig obliged to pay, not you. Uh, number number four, al hawl. Al hawl is a passage of a year, uh, which means, uh, according to the best opinion of the vast majority of the scholars, uh, zakah is not wajib uh, illa ba'd hawl al hawl. You have to wait for the passage of a year, then the zakah will be wajib for you. So today. Uh, lunar year. Mm -hmm. So today I, I got the nisab. Let's say if the nisab, nisab is $1,000. I'm just using $1,000 as an example. Let's say the nisab is $1,000. Today I got $1,000. Today is number 5 Ramadan, right? 5th Ramadan. Yeah, 5th Ramadan. Uh, next year, 5th Ramadan, if this wealth, $1,000, is still with me, Next year, the lunar, lunar year, fifth Ramadan, zakah is obligatory upon me. Mm -hmm. Fourth Ramadan, still zakah is not obligatory upon me. Mm -hmm. But the moment I reach fifth Ramadan, then the zakah is obligatory upon me as long as this wealth is kept by me up to up to date. So there are two things playing on here. One is the amount of the money itself, which is the nisab, uh, the nisab and, and the other is the hawl. Al hawl. Yeah. So you have to keep that nisab maintained for a period of one lunar year one for lunar. zakat to be yeah. viable on it. Yeah, so that's the condition number number four. Uh, the last condition is a soul, a soul with seed, mm -hmm. not a soul with sod. If you uh, go with sod, then it will be fasting. fasting. Then you have to fast to give the zakat, then it will not fast enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you have a soul, a soul is grazing. This is only applicable on the animals. Uh, most of the scholars, the vast majority of the scholars agree with it, except the Maliki scholars. Mm -hmm. The Maliki scholars, they said this is the laqab. Laqab means a title given, which is not supposed to be used. You know, it is just mentioned by the Sharia looking at the cultural practice of the people, but Allah SWT did not want us to base judgment on it. Mm -hmm. Like when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَبَائِبُكُمْ اللَّاتِي فِي حُجُورِكُمْ مِنْ نِسَائِكُمْ So he says, رَبَائِبُكُمْ اللَّاتِي This is the daughter of a person's wife. A person marries a woman, but she has daughter with her. Uh, uh, if he has relationship with the mother... Oh wait, so this is the daughter from the previous marriage. Yeah, the daughter from the previous marriage, yeah. not from him. Mm -hmm. yeah, he married a woman who has a daughter already from right. previous right. marriage. Right. So when he married this uh, uh, mother, can he marry the daughter? No. That's wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> he can marry the daughter as long as he did not have relationship with the, the mother. With the mother. Mm -hmm. you know, of course, when he is with the mother, he cannot have the daughter with, with him, mm -hmm. but he can divorce the daughter, uh, the mother, and marry the, the, the daughter. Provided he hasn't had a relationship. Uh, he hasn't had a relationship. But the moment he has a relationship with the mother, then the daughter is haram upon him. Forever. Mm -hmm. He cannot marry the daughter. Mm -hmm. So the moment he has a relationship with the mother, a sexual relationship with the mother, then the daughter will be haram forever. Mm -hmm. Contrary to the daughter. Mm -hmm. If he marries a, a woman, 
her mother is haram upon him even if he did not have a relationship with the daughter but if he married the mother he has to uh, have a relationship with her first for the daughter to be impermissible upon him so when Allah mentioned this he says and those raba'ib raba'ib means the daughter of the wife so he says does that mean this hukum is only applicable if the daughter of your wife lives with you what if she lives with her father there can you marry yeah the zahir will tell you why not allah says the one that stays with you the majority of the scholars will tell them come on you already know that Allah SWT uses this expression because this is what is happening in the Arab countries when they marry not just in the Arab countries but everywhere when a person marries and the, the, the wife has a daughter and the daughter is quite young he brings the daughter also with him at home mm -hmm. so Allah SWT is referring that those daughters that are uh, not yours but they belong to your wives Allah mm -hmm. uh, those people who are inside your, your house you know so this is what we call mafhum al Laqab is like the title or nickname Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is given uh, uh, something which we are not supposed to base the hukum on it. Mm -hmm. A person came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Tha'ir Ras, you know, curly hair, messy hair, dusty hair, you know, and he was rushing, he was running, dragging his uh, garment, and he was saying, Ya Rasulullah, halak tu ahlak, halak tu ahlak. I got myself into trouble and I got somebody also into trouble. The person was doing this. And then the Prophet Sallallahu addressed his matter. Does that mean we shouldn't give the same hukum unless if a person comes to us also that he has and, and, uh, curly hair. And ah, that's, he should have. So he has mm -hmm. to go mess up his hair if he wants the hukum to be like that. Mm -hmm. No, we don't, we don't go for this. So Malikiya said, this sawm is also like that. Mm -hmm. Majority of the scholars said, no, it is not. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used it in many times and also in some narration he says فِي الْغَنَمِ أَوْ فِي الْإِبْلِ إِذَا كَانَتْ سَائِمَةً If it is Sa'ima What does that mean? That means he intended a description mm -hmm. Because he says the zakah in this type of livestock when it is Sa'ima So we learn from this that he intended the description itself you know, so that's why this is the best opinion that this sawm is a condition for the animals to be uh, zakatable. If you have the ma'lufa, they call it, and those uh, the animal that you keep them for, what do you call it, breeding or grazing. Uh, no, no, not not a grazing. Grazing is the one that goes out and and eat by itself. Mm -hmm. You get it? But if you have the animal that you keep them, you are the one who is buying food for them. Right. You, feed the, uh, you feed them for milk and all of this. Uh, these animals are not zakatable. Even if you have them in millions, mm -hmm. you give zakat from the produce, the milk generated from them or any other things, but the animals themselves, they are not zakatable. So they, they have to be the one that goes out and take the, 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 the grace and the grass by itself in the vast majority of the year. Mm -hmm. So that means more than half a, half a year, they go out and eat by themselves. So they have to be free grazing animals uh, who are not animals. Uh, utilized for plowing the field or uh, any those, of those animals. Uh, those ones that you kept in a place, you feed them by yourself, they are not zakatable, according to the opinion of the majority of the scholars. Right. So these are the five conditions. There are some other conditions which are mentioned by some. And uh, I couldn't see any justification for this, you know, especially the condition that says zakah is only given uh, from the excess. Mm -hmm. uh, Zahir, if we take this uh, condition, then who gives zakah then? No one will say I nobody, have excess. Nobody will say, nobody will say I have excess. You know? mm -hmm. so, 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 and they're trying to say that, yeah, since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to be after one year, that means you're giving from the excess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we tell them no. That's the Sharia of Allah SWT and Ibadah. He says one year, we keep it one year. Because if a person keep the money which is zakatable for one year, but he needed to build his house, mm -hmm. does he pay the zakat from it? Yes, he has to. Mm -hmm. He has to, but if we go in this condition, he has to take his expenses first, and he has to take what he needs, the balance, which nobody will claim this balance, you know, then he can give the zakat on it. Mm -hmm. We tell them, no, it doesn't apply. apply. And that's, the howl is more than enough. If you keep wealth, and you do not use it for a year, you have to give the zakat. Whether you need it or you don't need it, you have to take that amount of the zakat and give it, and then the rest, go and do, uh, deal with it in the way in the way you want it. Mm. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so when it comes to uh, 
the conditions in some of the books they even mention other conditions like freedom so i think it could be a sub condition of milkia or ownership because a person can't have ownership if they are a slave or if they are not free yeah okay it's good in that in that regard because the slave doesn't have money actually mm-hmm. and that's why uh, keeping it in the way of the scholars is quite okay because when you say ownership the slave cannot own mm-hmm. so he, he is automatically out of the uh, what you call it, equation or whatever he is automatically out of it uh, because he doesn't own the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man ba'a abdan wa lahu malun fa maluhu lil ba'i illa an yashtarithu al mubta whoever sells a slave and this slave has wealth with him you know he said the wealth of the slave belongs to the the master the the seller yeah, the seller uh, except if the buyer make it as a condition that i'm going to buy the slave together with whatever he has mm-hmm. so we learn from this that a slave doesn't own so when i say ownership that means a slave is out automatically mm-hmm. yeah. so uh going back to the second condition so a question that we can ask is how do i know that i have met the nisab is there any sp- what, what is the threshold for nisab uh then that will lead us to a question what are the zakatable items mm-hmm. because for you to know the nisab then you have to know the items because mm-hmm. each item has its own uh nisab mm-hmm. and as such i will say that there are five main uh or four main things which are zakatable the last one is rakaz whether you call it zakat or not mm-hmm. we will deal with that later inshallah so the, the item number one is gold and silver and paper currency which are uh, included to be uh, in in line with gold and silver uh, by analogy mm-hmm. so we have this first item this gold silver and paper currency so these are the first category of the zakah and the second category is the uh, the lives uh, the trading properties the merchandise mm-hmm. the merchandise uh, i put them next to the gold and and silver because they are uh supposed to be taking their ruling from the gold and, and the silver the merchandise the trading properties trading properties we call them rurud tijara and these are the things that you buy with the intention of selling them and buying something else and selling them. Mm-hmm. like this you buy car and sell the car you buy uh, rice and sell it you know these are rurud tijara like the shops we have nowadays so this is number 2 number 3 is the livestock the animals and this is only restricted to four types of animals Mm-hmm. only uh, uh ca- camels cow and a goat and sheep no the kind horses no the kind mules no the kind donkeys no the kind any other things you know mm-hmm. so only these four camels cows and uh, sheep and goats yeah and the last is the the, the agricultural yield mm-hmm. agricultural yield is restricted to the seeds you know and some fruits such as date and raisins mm-hmm. other than that there is no zakah in it there this is also a controversial matter is it only restricted to those four items mentioned by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the hadith uh, tamar raisins and uh, and uh, what do you call wheat barley and the wheat and barley is that only uh, the the zakatable item so some said yes these are the only thing you should take zakah from because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you shouldn't take in anything other than these so some majority of the scholars said no because those were the things that are found in that place as well the prophet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expanded but he made it mandatory upon us to pay the zakah on the seed anything that is uh, a seed then we take zakah from it also mm-hmm. so these are the four main uh, items where zakah is is taken mm-hmm. and the last one is arrikaz arrikaz is is defined as definitely jahiliya the burial of the jahili time jahili times treasure uh, the treasure uh, jahili times uh, is referring to the time before the arrival of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and and uh, it is supposed to be uh, there for long periods of time and this is the buried treasure buried treasure that's why they call it al al kanzul adi in arabic mm-hmm. al kanzul adi you know adi in arabic it means normal no when i mean normal when we say adi adi mean it's okay normal but here it doesn't means adi referring to the culture mm-hmm. it means adi referring to the ad the ad and thamud yeah 
Why did they say that? They are referring to something which is so old because when does Ad exist? Very long time. Mm -hmm. When they said Al Kanzul Adi, an old tre treasure, they are talking about the treasure that is found to be buried by the old people. Good idea. In the past, they don't have banks and they don't have uh, places to save their money. They have to divide the system by themselves. I remember in Medina, uh, we have uh, uh, one of our scholars who taught us Nahu, uh, I guess his name is Al Kashash. And, uh, and subhanAllah, very good uh, person and strong also in Nahu, although young, but uh, very good in Nahu. So uh, he was telling us one day that uh, there is, uh, I mean, the smartest animal uh, is donkey. So I was like, okay, that's, that's against what everyone knows, you know. Even in a joke, yeah, donkey understand a joke after three days, you know, that's all. <laughs> So he told us, donkey is very smart. So we were surprised and waiting for him to prove it. Then he said, no, I just have this fact that the Arabs in the past, they don't have any place to save their money except to go to the forest and dig a hole and put it inside. But being a human being, uh, uh, you might forget. You know, human beings uh, forget. So what they do, they look into the animals they're dealing with. They found something that can help them in remembering the place where they, they put the money. They couldn't find it except a donkey. What they do is they bring a donkey and they put the money in the bag or in the sack or whatever in front of the donkey and the donkey will see the, the process. And then he uh, puts the wealth on his back and they go to the place where they want to bury the money. And they would dig the place in the presence of the donkey. The donkey will be watching. And then they would take the money that was on him and uh, and put inside the place and the donkey is monitoring that and they were close mm -hmm. 10 years later 20 years later mm -hmm. if you forgot the place where you put the money if that monkey is <laughs> a donkey okay. if that donkey is dead then khalas you also your money is mm -hmm. <laughs> you know <laughs> but if the donkey is still alive all that you have to do is to bring a bag, any bag, just fill it with anything in the presence of the donkey and then put it on, uh, on the donkey and that hit the donkey. Mm. They say, we'll go straight forward until the place where you put the monkey, um, what do you call the money previously. Mm -hmm. Do you get an idea? It will remember, even after 10 years, 20 years, it will remember the place, but you have to do the process like this, you know, mm -hmm. like a computer already stored the, the thing. Mm. I don't know whether it is a smartness or so part of it. They made the donkey like the captain of the ship yeah, for the rich. That's, uh, that's, <laughs> I don't know whether it's smartness or part of the dumbness. Or, mm. Anyway, so this is the Arabs in the past. This is what they used to do. They bury their money. Not just the Arab people in the past also, they always do that. So they bury the money in the place. So sometimes they forgot. So people in our time or the time before our time, they usually find these things. Mm -hmm. And usually when it is found, it's so huge. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu narrated the person who found this uh, rikaz, you know, in the past, and he doesn't know what to do with it. He took it back to the one who sold him the land. Mm -hmm. And the one who sold him the land told him that this is not mine. He said, maybe it is from your grandparents. He said, no, no, none of them told me that we had well inside here. He said, but anyway, I did not buy money from you. I, bu I bought the land. He said, no, I sold you the land and whatsoever is in it. So Allah, you we know, don't time, find such honesty anymore. In our time, what, who, who will fight like this, you know? Mm -hmm. So anyway, at the end of the day, they managed to reach somebody who told them, okay, since you don't want to take it, he doesn't want to take it. If you have children, let them marry and give them the wealth. Mm -hmm. Very interesting and good marriage, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so this is Rikaz. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَفِرْ رِكَازِ khumus." If a person finds the money that he can trace the sign of, uh, what do you call uh, some engravings on it or uh, something. Some, identification. Some sign that identification that says that this has been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. To get an idea. If he sees a sign that shows that no, it is recently buried, then this is the Lokata. A Lokata, then you have to advertise and uh, announce and look lost, for the property. Owner, lost property. Lost property. Look for the owner for a year. Mm -hmm. After one year, if nobody claimed, then you can use it. Mm -hmm. But if you couldn't find the sign that shows uh, that it is uh, buried uh, in the present time, that means it has been there for all ages. The Prophet ﷺ said, all that you have to do is to divide it by five and take 
uh, and take one out of five and give it in charity and uh, and the rest of the the four parts are yours you know. mm -hmm. so that's the recast so back to the issue of the nisab since now we know the items themselves let's go back to them one by one i have the gold and i have the silver mm -hmm. the nisab in the gold is uh, 85 grams of gold 85 grams of gold and that's the nisab of gold so where did we get this from from the, the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu because he talk about if Ashrina Mithqalan. When he says Ashrina Mithqalan, they, they, they try to get the, the Mithqal by weighing the grain of the, of the barley. Mm -hmm. I forgot exactly the way they do it, but a very interesting way. Uh, there have also some controversies among the scholars, but this is the closest one, the one that says uh, uh, 20 Mithqal is equivalent to 85 grams of of gold. gold, yeah, mm. 85 grams of gold and mi'ati dirham fiddha, the Prophet said 200 dirham of the fiddha, he said 20 dinar and 200 dirhams for the fiddha, the silver, and this is equivalent to 595 grams, the same method, mm -hmm. you know, 595 grams, yeah. Okay. So uh, you have to have 85 grams and 595 grams together or is it? Uh, no, this is separated. Uh, okay. this two, it's a very good question actually, uh, which uh, the scholars discuss if I have gold, which is not up to the Nisab, mm -hmm. but I have silver that, that is also not up to the Nisab. But if I put both of them combined together, I will reach the Nisab. The value would go more than the, uh, no, the, 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 the weight will reach the Nisab. Right, right. Uh, let's say I have um, gold is 20 dinar. Mm -hmm. I have only 10 dinar mm -hmm. of gold. Half of the nisal. Mm -hmm. But I have silver. Silver is 200 dirhams. But I have 100 dirhams of silver. Mm -hmm. If I look at the silver separately, it is not up to the nisal. So there is no zakah on me. Mm -hmm. If I look at the gold separately, it is not up to the nisal. There is no zakah on me. Mm -hmm. But if I put the gold and the silver, they constitute nisab. Yes, because that one is half of the nisab of the fiddha and this one is half of the nisab of the of the dhahab. So if I put them together, I have a nisab. Mm -hmm. But if I t t uh, keep them separately, there is no nisab. What must I do? According to many scholars, I have to put them together and give the zakah. Mm -hmm. According to some scholars, they said no. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in hadith separated them. He says no zakah in uh, silver unless if it reaches 200 dirhams. And then he said no zakah in gold except if, if the gold reaches 20 dinars. And he said there is no zakah if it is lesser than that. Mm -hmm. So then if I ask you to combine them, I have to provide evidence and such an evidence did not exist. And you know how sensitive it is when you take the wealth of a person without having his permission, even if you are taking it as zakah. Because mm -hmm. the Prophet ﷺ said, لَا حِلُّ مَا لِمْرُمِ إِلَّا بِطِيبٍ مِنْ نَفْسِهِ مَا لُمْرِئٍ إِلَّا بِطِيبٍ مِنْ نَفْسِهِ The wealth of a person is not halal for somebody to take it, except if that person agrees and he grants his consent. Mm -hmm. The Prophet ﷺ told Mu'adh, he said, وَاتَّقِئِ وَإِيَّاكَ وَكَرَعِ مَا وَالْهِمْ Don't you ever take the best of their wealth. Just restrict, restrict yourself to that which Allah SWT ask you to take. And beware of the invocation of the person whom you oppressed. Because there is no barrier between this invocation and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so the best opinion is that we don't combine. We treat each and every one of them separately, inshallah. So the nisab for gold is 85 grams. Whoever has it has to pay the zakah. And the nisab for the silver is 595 grams. Whoever has it has to pay the zakah. And the nisab for the paper currency is the value of one of these depending on the country where a person lives in. Mm -hmm. If the money, uh, the currency in your country is backed by gold, although nowadays there is nothing no representative, is not, nothing, but some scholars said we look at the original nature of the, the people in the mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. uh, it used to be backed by gold here in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. used to be backed by fiddha, uh, silver in, there in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. So although they don't they don't exist na nowadays, but still we go back to the to the original uh, What you call nature some of them said no We just have to focus on that which is more beneficial to the poor Silver always. And that silver is always so that's why they said it's better for a person just to base it on the silver If your money reaches the amount of the silver you just pay the pay the pay the zakah mm -hmm. 
This is when it comes to the paper currency. Okay, when it comes to the gold, you treat each and every one of them uh, in the way the Professor Lasso prescribed. So, uh, when I want to calculate my Nisab in, for my paper currency, I look at the value of 595 grams of silver in the market. Yeah. Let's say it's 12,000 ringgits. The time you are giving the zakah. Yeah. So, so let's say you it's 12,000 ringgits. Mm. Mm. So that 12,000 ringgits is my Nisab. Mm. Only once I hit 12,000 is when I start looking for the howl. Yeah, for instance, in Malaysia here is around 15,000 ringgit. And that's for gold. And that's for gold, yeah. Okay. And for silver, it's going to be way lesser than that. Mm -hmm. uh, way lesser than that. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you have the silver, which is, uh, uh, I mean, the equivalent of gold, which is around 15,000 ringgit. Uh, now then, it's around 18 to 20. Oh, now it's around, uh, 18 to 20. yeah. So the value, usually gold goes up. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then zakat is obligatory upon you after the passage of, of a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the then it's out for gold and then it's out for the silver and then it's out for the paper currency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now so, it's this two point five percent. It's only if you're calculating it based on the lunar calendar. Uh, I was reading, I think, one of the standards by uh, Awafi. They were mentioning if you're calculating by the solar, solar calendar, calendar, then it, it increases. It becomes, I think, 2.577%. So, yeah, they have this. And this is also wrong, actually. Thank you very much for bringing this matter because this is very wrong. Mm -hmm. And this is how we take people slowly, slowly and gradually, gradually away from the terms given to us by the Sharia. Mm -hmm. Why is it so difficult you know, for us to mark the lunar calendar? to get an idea but now we are just trying to find uh easy way for the people which it is not necessary at all because it is not difficult to remember the time uh, today is my nisab uh, zahid uh, which is fifth of ramadan what is so difficult for me to remember fifth of ramadan every year mm -hmm. at least i maintain the islamic terms rather than focusing on something which has no uh, a root in Islam and also many people might be making mistake you know in that you know in which they still give the 2.5 percent because this is what is stored in the in the in their brain mm -hmm. and that will be uh, trouble for the poor people because the, the the amount of the wealth will be reduced and decreased mm -hmm. so it's wrong to use the solar calendar you know and this calculation given by these uh, standards I really believe that is wrong. I wish they did not do it. I wish they advise people to remember this. What left for us, you know? Mm. Everything now we are going away from the Islamic, uh, what do you call, terms and uh, calculations and hisabs, and we're going to uh, others slowly, uh, slowly, slowly, and day after day. Mm -hmm. uh, and this one is accurate, no mistake in it. But ours might make a mistake. Mm -hmm. How did it come up with this calculation? Also is a, is a matter of question. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, just for our listeners, like because we were mentioning about dinars and dirhams, so one dinar is approximately 4.25 grams of gold. Yeah, so I did not make the uh, proper, but uh, maybe you. And then that would mean 20 dinars is 85 grams. 85 grams, yeah. Yes. But even when it comes to gold, uh, there was some talk about the purity of the gold or the how many carats of gold it is could you let us know about that yeah this one there is a, a way to calculate it and inshallah i think uh, if we uh, keep it on uh, the last uh, then it will be it will be good inshallah but zakah is given what we need to know here is zakah is given in uh, from the pure gold of a person mm -hmm. pure gold mm -hmm. uh, a sister has the jewelry uh, she doesn't pay zakah on the whole thing you know Mm -hmm. uh, because you have other substances being attached to it to make it uh, standing uh, properly. Uh, so the zakah is being paid on the gold itself. Mm -hmm. For sure, nowadays we have the system and uh, devices that can determine and detect how much, and how much you know, gold uh, uh, exists in this uh, specific uh, jewelry. Mm -hmm. So we go with that. And then there is a, a way to calculate uh, if you have this amount of carrot and how do you do the calculation. Uh, to get exactly how much is your gold and how much you're supposed to pay the, the zakah for that shop. So, uh, again, continuing with the zakat on gold itself, it brings us to the slightly controversial question of does a person pay zakat on gold and silver jewelry? And uh, the, jewel, the jewelry themselves. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Uh, would you like to address this or after I mention the Nisab of each and every Okay, one we can, we can uh, cover uh, the Nisab. Uh, then we come back to that. Definitely. Okay, um, 
I want to uh, link them. Sure, uh, sure. So now we know that it's all for the gold, and we know that it's all for the silver, and then it's all for the paper currency. Uh, the paper currency. Mm -hmm. And now the next, which is the merchandise. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the nisab for them? Uh, this one is very simple. You base the nisab on the nisab of gold or the silver. Mm -hmm. If you are dealing with gold, then uh, you go with the gold or the or the silver, mm -hmm. and then you pay the zakah. And uh, we are dealing the with the value, uh, the value of the merchandise, mm -hmm. uh, together with whatever cash you have, you put them all together and you pay the zakah and this value is supposed to be taken the time you are paying the zakah, not the value at the time you bought them, mm -hmm. the value at the time you are paying the zakah. Mm -hmm. That's why if let's say the time you bought them, uh, you spent uh, 20,000 ringgit to equip the shop. Mm -hmm. And uh, after one year, when you come, it dropped down to 15,000 ringgit. And the Nisab is 18,000 ringgit, as you have said uh, just now. No zakah on you. No zakah on you. But let's say you bought them uh, 15,000 ringgit, but then the, the, the value increases, you know. It increases after a few days, it reached 18,000 ringgit. After one year, you pay the zakah, although the same items, you know, but mm -hmm. you pay the zakah since the value increases. So that's why they said you take from the value of those items the moment you are paying the zakah, at the time you are paying the zakah, not the time you, you got the items. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the, the merchandise, and according to the best opinion of the, the scholars, that is zakah on the merchandise. Uh, the next this would be the merchandise or the trading goods uh, the or trading, everything? The trade, everything that you prepare for trading. Mm -hmm. Everything that you prepare for trading, yeah. <coughs> Although there are some controversies when, let's say, a person has uh, gold as a trading property. Mm -hmm. Is he going to treat them like a trading property? And not gold, uh, animals. You know, gold is simple because mm -hmm. uh, you are actually basing the other uh, items on it. But let's say you have animals. Uh, the livestock, ho uh, cows. Mm -hmm. Uh, horses, no problem. Horses is trading properties if you are buying and selling them. Mm -hmm. But let's say you have cows. You buy cows and sell cows. It depends on your intention uh, what you're yeah, using it for. Uh, that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. And you have, a, uh, I mean, controversy among the scholars. Some said you have to treat them like a trading property. Mm -hmm. Some scholars said they have their own specific way of treatment. You have to keep it in the way it is. Mm -hmm. You don't treat them like, like the trading properties. So I will uh, suggest the best for the uh, either one that is better for the for the poor people. Uh, people, we will advise the person to go to go with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, The next is the livestock. Then it's on the livestock. Uh, then it's on the livestock. And you have uh, uh, camels, and you have cows, cows and you have uh, sheep and goat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this one is is quite detailed. And uh, I will not go to, through all of them, but I will just talk the initial, about the initial nisab of each and every one of them. Mm -hmm. The camels, uh, there is no zakah on them until they reach five. Five camels. Uh, you don't pay the zakah when you have four camels, but when you have five camels, you pay the zakah. But if I am to ask a person to pay out of five camels to pay one camel, how many people do you think will participate in zakah? <laughs> Only a few, you know. It will be too much for him. Should be okay since you're pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows us properly. It would be too much for, for that person. So Islam did not ask him to pay from the camels. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to pay from, from the sheep and goat. Mm -hmm. So when he has five camels, he gives one sheep. Up to nine camels. Every year he gives one sheep. Up to nine camels. When they reach nine camels, every year, uh, uh, I'm sorry, every year one sheep. Until the time they reach ten. When they reach 10, then he will start giving two sheep every year. Mm -hmm. Two sheep every year, two sheep every year. Until 15. When they reach 15, the moment they reach 15, then every year he has to start giving three, uh, three camels. Until 20. When they reach 20, every year he gives four, ca four sheep. Four sheep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Until the time they reach 25. Then he will start giving uh, from the from the camels themselves. Mm -hmm. And the first uh, one he gives in this is Bintu, Bintu Makhad. Bintu Makhad is the, is, the, is the daughter of a she-camel that is pregnant. Mm -hmm. The daughter, a camel, 
you know, in which the mother of this camel is pregnant now, currently. So one year old. Uh, around one year old, around that amount. So he ha he has to give a camel that the mother of this camel is pregnant. Mm -hmm. And there we go, until the next one is been to Laboon, and then you go to Hekka, and then Jada, and then and, and then also long calculation mentioned by the majority of the scholars and the Hanafis, they have their own. But uh, this is just to give, uh, what do you call, the brief about uh, uh, what is the Nasaf for the camels and when does it begin. Okay, usually for this type of summaries, they just restrict themselves to the first Nisab. When do you start giving the Zakah? The details will be taken in the details uh, books of uh, So, for yeah. five camels, you give one sheep? One sheep, yeah. What if I don't have sheep? Uh, you buy. It is obligatory upon you to buy. If you have money, you buy. If you don't have money, then it will be obligatory upon you. Loan on you, whenever you have, you can, you can give. So, I need to give the sheep itself or can I just give the value of the uh, sheep? No, you give the sheep itself. Sheep yeah, this is what is called ikhraj zakat fi ikhraj qiyam fi zakat. Mm -hmm. Spending, I mean, giving values instead of the the thing that Allah wanted to ask you to do. Is it permissible Islamically? According to the vast majority uh, of the scholars' opinion, is wrong for mm -hmm. a person to do it. Although Ahnaf and some of the scholars of Hadith legalize it, but it is wrong. There is nothing to support it from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu so this would apply for even the bin Makhad or the uh, uh, bin Laboon. Uh, if you don't are, have them, uh, there then you are, would get them. No, there are some situations where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says uh, a person should give, uh, let's say uh, you are supposed to give uh, uh, bin to Laboon, but you don't have, but you have bin to Makhad. Mm. Bin to Laboon is bigger, is around two year old uh, uh, camel, is bigger than bin to Makhad, mm. but you don't find. Do you get an idea? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has, has mentioned that you have to give a sheep to replace that uh, difference, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so you see you are given from some, or you give, uh, uh, th 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 I forgot the amount, the amount of money, the darahim. So this is when the Prophet also mentioned the value. He said, if you couldn't find the specific amount that you're supposed to, I mean the specific type of camel you're supposed to be given, but uh, uh, fortunately you can find uh, another uh, type of camel which is lesser. Mm -hmm. Then the Prophet ﷺ said you should give that lower, I mean, uh, I mean smaller uh, size camel and then you have to attach with it a sheep mm -hmm. or certain amount of money that is equivalent of that sheep. Like a compensation. A compensation. And the same goes to the situation when you are supposed to give bin to Makhat, but you don't have. But you have bin to Laboon, which is older than bin to Makhat. Two years. Uh, two years, for instance. You give it that one, and you ask the Sa'i, the Zakat collector, to pay you back that amount, a sheep, or that amount of money. Mm -hmm. Justice of Sharia. Now. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. So that's camels. And then we move on to cows. Cows. Uh, the cow, the result for the cow is uh, 30 cows. You know, when you have 29, there will be no zakah until the time they reach 30. Uh, from the time they reach 30, then you start giving the cow. You give a cow tabi'un or tabi'ah. Tabi'un is the is a one-year-old cow, male or female. Uh, usually, you give uh, uh, you give female in zakah, mm -hmm. and this is one of the areas where giving male also is is permissible. So you give you give a male or female. The Prophet Sallallahu said. So when you have what? When you have 30 cows. Mm -hmm. uh, and then every year you give one cow to be it. And until the time they reach 40. When they reach 40, then you start giving Musinna. Musinna is a two-year-old cow, uh, female. Mm -hmm. yeah, so out of, and then out of every 30 cows, you give one to be it. And out of every 40 cows, you give one, one Musinna. And there we go. It's the easiest way of calculation uh, dealing with the cows. Mm -hmm. The next one is the, the sheep and the goat. Both of them, uh, they have the same nisab. Mm -hmm. uh, the Prophet also mentioned that when they reach uh, 40, then you start giving zakah. Every year you give one uh, sheep. Every year you give one sheep. Uh, until the time they reach 120. 120. You still give one sheep. When they reach 121, then you start giving uh, two sheep every year. Two sheep everywhere. Until uh, every year. Until the time they reach 200. When they reach 200, then you start giving three sheep every year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Until the time they reach 300, then the scholar said from this, then out of every 100, you give one sheep. Out of every 100, you give one sheep. 
What happened to the balance in all of these animals? Let's say uh, you're required to give uh, one sheep out of every 40. And now you have 60 and mm -hmm. 80. Mm -hmm. The balance, shall you pay the car on it? No, they call them al or al -waqas. There is no zakah in them at all. So it has to reach the nisab first for the zakah to be obligatory. So now when I have 125, no zakah on the balance of the five, uh, the sheep. I, can, I should only pay the zakah on 120, 21, which is only, only one sheep. But uh, this is saying if the ownership is with one person. Yeah. What if the flock is large and they two or by. three people two have people, they ownership? Have, they have the ownership. Uh, the Prophet said, uh, The Prophet said, if you have these khalitain, these people who agree to combine the, 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 the animals, you know, they put them all together, they, they rest together, they go and graze together. So when the zakah comes, we take from both of them collectively. We consider them as one entity. Mm -hmm. That's why the Prophet said, There are some people, they don't want to pay the zakah. When they see the sa'i coming, the zakah collector, they combine them mm -hmm. to minimize the cost. Mm -hmm. They think they're playing game with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, how is it going to minimize? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. If you have 40 and I have 40, how much you give? One. one. How much I give? One. one. If you put them all together, they become 80. How much we give all together? One. Only one. Yeah. So they do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, and if you if you have if you have uh, 40, and I have uh, and uh, no, you have 25. Okay. You have 25, and I have 40. Okay. And they're all together. Mm -hmm. uh, if the sa'i comes, uh, no, not, not that one. Uh, if you have uh, now we, we give the example of when they, they combine them all together so that they can minimize the cost right mm -hmm. uh, let me give another example why the zakah is even waived mm -hmm. they're all together and you have uh, I think 21, 20, 21. Uh, 20, 20 you have 21 I have 21 they're mm -hmm. all together mm -hmm. zakah is one mm -hmm. when he came we separate it mm -hmm. you take yours I take mine until mm -hmm. he leave the place yeah, so the Prophet said this is not acceptable. If the government understands this, they have to bring them back together and count and take uh, the, the, the zakah from, from them. Uh, so when uh, people come into this kind of partnership, the zakah should be taken from uh, the collective amount of uh, money that belongs to both of them. And uh, from this also we get how to deal with the, the companies nowadays, the partnership we're having, the investment we're having, so many people come together. We take the zakah from the collective wealth. And if uh, the company is not making that kind of zakah, then each and every uh, individual has to be responsible paying the zakah according to the, the, what do you call, the money, the nature of the money he has, the capital and the profit he has with the, with the company. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Jazakumullah okay. khair. So uh, we will be taking a short break and inshallah stay tuned. We'll be covering a lot more stuff on how to calculate the nisab, how to calculate zakat overall, different shares, profits, cryptocurrencies and a lot more. Uh, inshallah after the break. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.